Next to me is something very, very exciting. This is Aston Martin's first ever SUV in the company's 107 year long history. It's set to compete against the likes of the Bentley Bentayga and the Lamborghini Urus, but it offers a more stylish, elegant alternative and has on-road and off-road capabilities that are promised to be better than any other Aston ever before. That's right, this thing is actually capable off-roading. How crazy is that? Special thanks to Aston Martin of Rancho Mirage for making this possible. I got a link in the description below to their website. The DBX is an incredibly attractive SUV, especially in person. Honestly, guys, pictures don't do this vehicle justice. In person, the DBX is incredibly good looking, and that's no easy feat. It has to look strikingly Aston Martin and carry design cues of the brand's past, yet be an SUV at the same time. A difficult feat for sure. Now other companies like Lamborghini got to borrow platforms for vehicles like the Urus. Aston Martin had to create something entirely new and they've absolutely nailed it. I mean, looking at the design, you can see borrowed stylistic cues. The front massive elegant grille looks a bit DB11-ish and we've got vents on the hood that are absolutely epic. These small rounded classic elegant Aston Martin headlights. What's really cool is there's some functional aerodynamics in the front of the vehicle as well. We've got these very neat daytime running lights, but actually on the inside of the daytime running light is a vent that allows air to pass through it over the wheels to reduce drag and then out the side vents that I'll talk about a little bit in the future of the video. Really nice carbon fiber accents. Overall, I just love the way this thing looks. Let's pop the hood. Under the hood of the DBX is a 4-liter twin-turbocharged V8. It makes 542 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. The cool part is it's actually an AMG motor. There was a partnership between Aston and AMG to put some of their power plants in the new Aston Martins, and it's worked very well in this case. It's coupled to a 9-speed automatic gearbox and uses Mercedes 4-matic all-wheel drive system with some tweaks, of course, for the off-road capabilities. This thing makes pops and bangs and cracks out of the exhaust like no tomorrow. It's honestly an incredibly good sounding SUV. I love when you pop the massive hood, seeing the actual cutouts for the headlights themselves, as well as the venting underneath. You can see that massive meaty V8 that surely can be tuned for a heck of a lot more power if for some reason you need more than 542. Let's check out the side. The side profile of the DBX has some unique styling cues to make it stand out from the rest of the pack. I absolutely love this V-shaped cutout here that's both aerodynamically efficient, actually allows turbulent airflow to escape off the wheel out along the side of the car to keep air flowing, but also looks beautiful as well. It kind of reminds me of some past designs of Aston Martin Zagatos. Now, if you look at the roof line, it actually looks more like a sport back. It's more sloping in design than traditional SUVs, which helps a lot with the proportions. The car looks poised and ready to go, and you'd never know on the surface that this is actually wider and longer than a Range Rover SV autobiography. Although, because Aston Martin has employed a ton of aluminum, the entire car is constructed of aluminum, it's 850 pounds lighter than the SV autobiography. Because of that, it's able to sprint from 0 to 60 miles an hour in just 4.3 seconds. Pretty fast for an SUV. And it comes standard with gorgeous 22-inch wheels. Not much to hate about that. The rear of the DBX is strikingly Aston as well and bears a lot of resemblance to the Vantage in terms of its rear kind of ducktail design. And that is a huge compliment because I think the rear end of that car is one of the prettiest out there. I love the way the rear taillights integrate into the rear hatch up and over in one seamless line. It's just a pretty design. Now down here, we've actually got some of the most amount of carbon fiber I've ever seen fitted to an SUV as standard. We've got this beautiful diffuser with the dual tip split exhaust. This thing sounds absolutely amazing. I really like the little cutouts around the exhaust tip as well. Now, the DBX is practical as it is elegant. If we open up the rear hatch here, it reveals 22 cubic feet of storage space. But what's more is you can actually fold down those rear seats to give it 54 cubic feet of storage space, which means you can go out in the outdoors. You can take bikes in it. You can take really whatever you want, and it can tow 6,000 pounds. So if you want to tow some motocross bikes behind you when you go out into the wilderness or a tent or whatever you need, you can do it. The rear 
of the DVX is a lovely place to be. We have tons of legroom, tons of headroom. If you're well over six feet tall, it wouldn't be a problem at all sitting back here. We've got this little touch screen if you want to cool the seats or heat them. It's 105 degrees out today, so definitely gonna leave the cooled seat feature on. We've also got this massive panoramic sunroof so you can view the outdoors. I love the design language of the seat. We've got this brogued look, kind of like high-end fine Italian shoes that separate the seat design from honestly anything other than Aston Martin. There is no other car that has these types of patterns in the seats. The real magic happens in the front. Let's check it out. The design language and the material choices of the DBX interior are brilliant. Apparently this handcrafted interior takes more than 200 hours to complete. We've got a mix of carbon fiber, leather, aluminum. Check out the massive aluminum paddles mounted to the steering wheel itself. Now, what I really like is underneath this carbon fiber bridge, it actually has some cool storage space for you to put your phone or purse or bag underneath there. We've also got a openable storage bin here, as well as a normal glove compartment. A unique element of all Aston Martins is the different place that you actually select the drive mode. So up here, if you're sitting to put it into park, you click here. To turn the car on, you've got this beautiful crystal glass start stop button, and then here is drive. Now below that, we've got a new infotainment screen. It's actually borrowed from Mercedes's platform. It's not touchscreen, but you use this control wheel down below. Also, we've got six different driving modes that I'll talk about in a bit, but if you check out the screen here that's fully digital and customizable, as you go through the different driving modes, the screen itself configures in different colors. Watch, we go down to Sport Plus, and now the TAC and Speedo are lit up in red. To talk more about the driving features and actually what it's like behind the wheel, let's take the DBX out on the road and see what it's like. <laughs> Behind the wheel of the DBX now, and the first thing you notice is that glorious V8 soundtrack. Unlike the Bentley Bentayga where you hear this little intrusion of V8 in this, it pops, it cracks in Sport Plus mode, and honestly, <laughs> sounds epic. So if you're worried that the Aston Martin DBX doesn't sound like a proper Aston Martin, it sounds fantastic. Imagine this thing with a V12. That would be absolutely wild. So the car actually drives predominantly in a rear wheel drive bias setting. It can actually send 100% of the power to the rear wheels. When it determines that they're slip or you're off-roading, it can actually send 47% of the available torque and power to the front wheels. It rides on a rather complex triple chamber air suspension that's actually height adjustable. When you initially get behind the wheel of the Aston Martin and you go through those six different driving modes, let's go ahead and put it into GT mode. The car feels nice, it's supple, it's easy to drive, it's smooth over bumps, but it does feel a little bit sportier uh, than a vehicle like the Bentley Bentayga. Put it into Sport Plus mode and the suspension stiffens, the steering stiffens, and those shifts become a heck of a lot more crisp. And it actually feels a lot more like a performance GT car that's just a little bit bigger than it does an SUV. I'm actually impressed with the way this car goes around turns and just the way it rides. It feels sporty, it feels lively, it feels fun. And especially with that V8 soundtrack, you're not likely to get bored. Like I mentioned, because of the air suspension, it has variable height adjustment. So we're cruising along right now in GT mode, just barreling down the highway in comfort. Now, if you were to put the mode into terrain plus mode, it actually raises the ground clearance from 7.5 inches to 9.3. That's a significant change. And this car is capable of wading through 20 inches deep of water. The odds you end up doing that in a DBX are probably low, but it is very, very capable on the off-road. To know that, yeah, likely the average DBX buyer is going to be driving it to and from work or on 
nice weekend commutes to go on vacation. But to be able to take this camping or in the dunes or desert is just such a cool thought. Now, the opposite is true of the suspension when you put it into Sport Plus mode. The SUV lowers itself from seven and a half inches of ground clearance down to 6.3 in Sport Plus. The same thing actually happens if you go over 124 miles an hour for aerodynamic purposes. I like it. Honestly, the biggest pleasure of the Aston Martin DBX is the way that it drives. I wanna say it's surprising, but of course it's Aston Martin, so it's not really surprising that it would handle well. But the car kind of shrinks around you as you drive it quicker and quicker. The way the A-pillars and the door slope inwards, it feels like you're in this kind of cocoon. It's not claustrophobic in any way, but it feels- Because of the design language and the way it slopes inwards, it's easier to place the vehicle on the road, and it feels totter. Like I said before, it just feels more like a sporty GT car than it does an SUV. And that is honestly an amazing, amazing thing. Go ahead and put it back into Sport Plus mode because honestly, the sounds this thing makes. Oh my God. <laughs> is fantastic. If you let off the gas, it pops and cracks. The transmission isn't the fastest responding unit in the world, but it does work nicely, and I really like the way the paddles feel when you actually pull them. The front dash layout with the nice color configurable screen, you can also put up navigation if you want instead of the RPMs. They did a good job. Off the line. <laughs> So we've got some twisty canyon roads up ahead. I'm gonna to switch to the point of view camera so you can see exactly what this thing is like to drive and push it through its paces a little bit more so we can really feel what the handling's like. Proper canyon road up ahead. Now it's time to really put the DBX through its paces. Now you can see what I was viewing, very pretty layout. Go ahead, make sure that we are in Sport Plus mode and off we go. It really is a confidence-inspiring SUV. For something that weighs 4,950 pounds, you'd imagine sending it around canyon corners quickly would be a little bit of a fearful experience, worried that the vehicle might not slow down or might not be able to seemingly defy the laws of gravity to make it around turns quickly, but the active anti-roll system, it's got an electronic anti-roll system similar to the Bentayga, but in this case, I think it keeps the car even more stable makes it so there's virtually no body roll whatsoever. And the steering is just the right amount of firmness as well as comfort, so it's not overbearing to drive, but man, the levels of grip are fantastic. Doesn't appear to understeer at all. Wow. I mean, this truly is a practical SUV that you could drive every single day and have a blast in in the canyons and then also go off-roading. It literally is and might very well be the ultimate SUV for under $200,000. Wow, I'm impressed with the way this handles. Seriously, guys. It's really flat through the corners. I mean, literally no body roll whatsoever. And I love that V8 soundtrack. It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> I had my reservations with this car. Is it possible for Aston Martin to make a truly brilliant SUV on their first try? And after driving this, I am in love with the DBX. It's an absolute blast to drive. It's comfortable. It's confidence inspiring. It sounds great. It's practical and it's really everything all in one. Wow. Well, there you guys have it. Two thumbs up for the Aston Martin DBX. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you guys next video. Man, this thing is awesome.